All right, good morning, everyone. So this is my coverage of Illustrator for our first certification bootcamp review video. And some of this stuff is going to be a review for some of you. Uh, some of it we touched on barely in the uh, Illustrator lessons and the Illustrator um, sort prep activities. But uh, we didn't go into a whole lot of depth. These are types of things that you might get uh, uh, multiple choice questions on for the certification exam. So I wanted to go over some of the different concepts so that I can make sure that you understand what you need to know for the certification exam. Plus, there's a little Socrative quiz that you will be doing uh, covering five questions. You'll be doing one of these each day. And this will fill in some of the blanks on some of the things you might not know. Now, these questions are very closely tied to the concepts that you will see on the certification exam and the multiple choice question portions. So, first thing I want to talk about is not necessarily an illustrator specific idea, but it is more about design. And so, the question that you might see might relate to. Um, what do you need in order to create a flyer for an event? And so what you'd want to consider is the target audience, who the message that you are communicating is going to, and um, their things like how old they are, uh, their gender, if, if it's all ages and all genders, then um, it might be, um, it might have to do with a certain area or a language spoken. Um, so, for instance, if you are creating an event that is targeting a large um, population of people of a certain ethnicity uh, or that speak a certain language, then you might create the flyer in that language. Any text information might be in that language. Or you might have, if it's if you know that you're going to have a target audience that is both English speaking and uh, Spanish speaking and Creole speaking, then you would have possibly uh, all three languages represented somewhere in the flyer. So demographics are very important. The other thing you need to know is what the purpose of the event is. So if it's a football game, you can communicate the idea that it's a football game and you would want information like where the event is, uh, when it is, you'd want to be thorough. So this is something that when you're creating a flyer for an event, you want to think about what it's going to take to get people to that event. And if you miss any of the details, then you're going to be missing the crowd. All right, so another thing that might come up is uh, the types of uh, deliverables that you might need for a uh, given design project. And so uh, there are some different terms that are thrown around in graphic design, and uh, some of those terms are a little bit confusing, and so I want to kind of go over those with you briefly. So just hang out for a second, and I'll be right there with you. I'm going to pull up a website that uh, lists some of these things. So when you're talking about project management, uh, some of the things that come up are uh, deliverables. And what a deliverable is is actually something that the client receives as a result of some action within the project. So one of those things that obviously would happen in a design project is that you would be um, giving them the final compositions, the actual comps. Um, so you also might hear of something called comprehensive sketches, and these would be sketches that um, you know you're showing a progression of different. Um, sketched ideas and so comps and sketches are generally project deliverables. Uh, what is not is something called scope creep and this is something that might pop up. You might see it on a certification exam but scope creep is um, when you've created a project and you have some guidelines but um, 
it's too loose. You don't really, uh, you, you don't account for p the potential that you're going to need more time or that you, you don't have the resources to um, uh, limit the project. Uh, you have, uh, you just keep working and, uh, oh wait, uh, we never really set a clear deadline and so you keep working and I, I've actually experienced this when I created album artwork for one band where the client just kept responding to me, well, I kind of like this idea, but can we do this? And so we never really established uh, some set guidelines. And this is something where you'd want to have good planning in place in the beginning. So it's not a deliverable. It's not something you give to the person that you are doing the work for. What you would give to them would be things like sketches. You might, um, some in some cases, you might um, have an expense report um, if you had to actually do the spinning, but most of the time you'll give some sort of log of your work, um, like when you did certain amounts of work, especially if you're a freelance graphic designer, um, you want to keep track of your work. You want to you know, keep a log. So I would say I worked four hours on Sunday. I worked six hours on Monday. And you would have your hourly rate calculate it and you tell them that's how much they owe you so you give them some sort of report of um, what uh, you know what they need to pay you so that's that the next thing I want to talk about is um, if you are um, a freelance graphic designer and you want to make sure you're creating what your client is looking for there are some things that they just seem like common sense but you want to ensure that you are regularly reporting on the progress of the design with your client. You also want to make sure that, well, if you're making some changes, that this is something that you agreed upon with the client. So you want their permission before you make any big changes. So this has to do a lot with communication. So that's one thing that's really key with working with a client is communicating. You want to make sure that you're communicating progress. You want to make sure that you're getting their permission for any major changes. And you don't want to wait until the very end to show them the final idea. You want to develop this with the client. You want them to see your progress. So another thing is, is it's good to have sketches for your client and mock-ups. Mock-ups are basically like sketches and that you can show what the final design might look like in its final form. For instance, with album artwork, I might create something that actually looks like the album artwork so that they can see what it would look like. They can imagine the design rather than just what's on the cover. They can actually see a visual of the cover. <clears throat> so it's very important that you do those things early on and throughout rather than waiting until the last minute. You never want to show the changes in your design at the end. You want to make sure you're in constant communication throughout your project. So next up, I want to talk about uh, copyright. And copyright um, is something that within schools, we have a thing called fair use, where we are allowed to use certain things for certain purposes. For educational purposes, we can use um, certain types of um, creative commons conditions and things like that where I can get a picture off the internet and you can edit it and it's not going anywhere. It's not being used for monetary gain by any uh, means. And so um, it would fall under what's called fair use. Now with fair use and creative commons, there are some important considerations and conditions. And so this is actually something that's going to come up uh, very likely on certification exams and that is uh, first of all uh, these types of graphics to indicate what the different types of Creative Commons licenses are and what types of uh, fair use um, or you know allowances you might have to use certain graphics and copyright is uh, usually set in stone as soon as the design is published, whether it has a little C in a circle or not. It is assumed that the uh, a work is copyrighted if you find it online and you don't see any indication as to any of the license conditions listed here. So the license conditions are 
first of all, you can remember the first graphic because you see a little person. Attribution means that you're basically giving credit to that person. So if you use a picture created by another artist or another designer, um, if you are using it in some way on the web or in any other publication that you're creating, whether it's an on-screen or for print publication, you give them credit and that would fulfill the attribution condition. So attribution would be like uh, this design by Andy Jeter. Share-alike allows um, you to, um, you basically, uh, the person who created the image is allowing others to copy, distribute. Um, they can basically do anything they want as long as um, they have given some sort of credit. Um, if they want to do something under terms other than what has been specified, they have to get permission. So share alike is if other people are using it a certain way, um, then you can use it if, if it's something that the person who the author has created is using it, for instance, as a profile picture, and um, they have a share alike condition, then they're allowing you to use that same graphic as a profile picture um, because that's how they're using it. But if it's used in a different way, then it's not necessarily um, something you can do without their permission. So, for instance, I have done this before where I used a uh, banner graphic for uh, one of my Facebook pages where I was, uh, you know, uh, basically advertising my graphic design services where I encouraged people to share it. And that was the condition under which people use the graphic. I let them know it was a share-alike condition. Um, I actually didn't have to say share like I just said please share and so I gave permission for that but had somebody come back and just copied the album artwork that I created on the um, banner graphic and um, done something with it then it would have not um, been something that I would have been happy with because it's not wasn't my intention um, so that's another condition another one is non-commercial where basically um, Anything non-commercial, um, people aren't making money from it. They can use the graphic or the design or the artwork, the music, the whatever. Uh, as long as they're not making money. If they start making money from it, they have to get permission first. And sometimes that involves paying royalties. Um, for instance, if you use music in your YouTube video and you put it up on YouTube, uh, if it's uh, some, some other artist's music that you didn't get permission from, Typically what will happen is um, YouTube gets away with it by put, uh, putting up ads and through ads, sorry I had a brief interruption there. So anyways, um, the last of these attributes, I already talked about non-commercial, the last of these is no derivatives and that means that um, you basically... Um, you allow others to copy, distribute, and display only original copies of your work. Derivative works are basically when things are, um, when you're allowed, if you're given permission to create a derivative work, it means you take something and you change it, you edit it. So if I, for instance, took something that was, um, you know, a current image, not in the public domain, but there was a derivatives license allowance, then I would be allowed to um, change it. I'd be allowed to change the color, change the wording, you know, something like that. So you think about a lot of music where they create parodies, like Weird Al Yankovic does a lot of that. Um, that would be considered a derivative work. So um, all in all, when... Um, copyright has expired or never existed then you're talking about um, uh, designs artwork creative works being in the public domain and public domain basically means you can do whatever you want with it uh, fair use again is what I said when you know if you're uh, using it for educational purposes um, or some sort of non financial gain kind of situation it is used simply, um, you know, for something that is considered fair use um, and not 
hurting the the uh, original goals of the individual who created the work, um, then you um, are working with fair use. So the last thing I want to talk about is going to be really brief, but when you're working in um, some sort of on some sort of print graphic, um, there's a, a term called bleed, and what that is is uh, basically it's a way to make sure that you don't end up with a weird white line around a design. So we'll just consider this logo here as being something we're going to print on. Um, uh, I don't know, some sort of CD cover. And we want to have a different color background, so I'm going to put a square on here and just fill up the artboard. I'll make it, I don't know, um, I'm going to do a different color other than the school colors there. I'll just pick something here. Uh, I'll just do blue here for now. And I'm going to send it behind the gator. And I, so I got my blue here. As is, there's a possibility when this is print and cut that it's not going to be perfect and we might end up with a thin white line. So basically what bleed is, is it'll, it's a little bit of overprint that goes beyond the bounds of the design. Usually it's just with background and you don't want to have anything that would definitely need to show up. So if you have just background color or background pattern and it's you know, it's kind of overflowed, and that's what's called bleed. So if you think about something bleeding, it's just kind of overflowing. That's what bleed is. And when you're creating a uh, new Photoshop file for print, I believe it gives you the options for bleed. So if I go to print here, you'll see a thing that says bleed. And this tells you, okay, well, I can choose like five points of margin all the way around. And when I click create, you are going to notice that this red line extends beyond the artboard, and that's basically giving a little extra um, uh, beyond the white so that when it prints, whatever prints, is not going to end up with a thin white line. So that's bleed. All right, so this is the beginning of the first, I mean, this is the first video. This is the end of the first video. Um, we'll, we will be doing a little quiz with Socrative each day. And um, so just if you uh, pay attention to what I said in this video, you should be able to answer all the questions correctly. All right, have a good day. Good luck.